So hello everyone, uh, my name is Stepan and thanks for, to the organizers for this uh, nice opportunity to deliver a presentation today. Uh, I'm Skoltek, second year PhD student, uh, and the topic of my presentation is converter interface generation, modeling, dynamic simulation, and hardware in the loop testing. Uh, my supervisors are Professor Vladimir Terzia and uh, Professor Pyotr Vorobyov. And I have uh, electrical engineering background, uh, specializing on relay protection and automation. And uh, one of my research areas is power system simulations, about which I will talk today. The presentation content is following introduction, uh, research, industrial project, and summary. Uh, so the growth of uh, the population, energy industries, and uh, the limitations of uh, centralized energy supply are among the main problems uh, facing modern energy sphere. Uh, the distributed energy concept uh, implies the creation of separate energy structures that have local energy sources and are able to meet consumer demand uh, during peak load periods uh, when the central grid cannot provide power amounts needed. A separate feature of the mentioned concept is the use of uh, renewable energy sources. And when it comes to renewable energy, we need to remember that the decarbonization trend, uh, which is uh, one of the fundamental tasks of the energy sector nowadays. The figure shows the trend towards the phasing out of fossil fuels in favor of renewable and nuclear energy. Uh, in 2021, uh, the Russian government approved a roadmap for energy, which focuses on the development of hard to reach regions through renewable energy. The task of uh, specialists' uh, professional development is also important. According to the energy strategy of uh, Russia, despite the fact that the country is almost not presented in the world uh, energy market uh, based on renewable energy, uh, it will not remain aloof from uh, this direction development. This slide uh, represents the renewable potential uh, available in the country. So low, medium, and uh, high levels uh, of the renewable potential uh, use efficiency on the territories of uh, Russian regions marked as uh, gray, yellow, and red. It can be said that the country has quite favorable conditions uh, for the functioning of renewable sources, especially uh, in the southern and far eastern regions. Uh, the quantitative ratios of the population uh, of the Russian regions is presented on this slide. Uh, the country is large and the population is uh, unevenly distributed. Uh, distributed energy can find its application foremost in remote regions of Russia, for example, Siberia and the Far East uh, that are characterized by uh, relatively low population density and uh, accordingly uh, large distances of settlements from uh, large network facilities. In these regions, uh, it, may, uh, it may not be economically feasible to build uh, power lines to connect, for example, uh, villages with a population of several hundred uh, people to a centralized power supply. To face uh, non-trivial problems of modern energy uh, sphere, Skoltech Center for Energy Science and Technology was uh, grounded in 2018. Speaking about history of our center, uh, our center has been formed combining the former center for electrochemical uh, energy storage and uh, a center for energy systems. Uh, mission 
of our center is uh, the synthesis of advanced technologies and science for modern energy. Uh, one of the departments of the center is a laboratory of uh, modern energy systems. The laboratory was created with the support of Skoltech and the government. The head of the laboratory is Professor Vladimir Terzi, my supervisor. Uh, one of the main projects uh, that the laboratory is engaged in uh, is the advanced monitoring protection and control of future power systems. Uh, so, uh, uh, impact project uh, focused uh, on uh, some methodologies and applications for optimal deployment of hardware and software technologies to support integrated monitoring, protection, and control strategies for secure, uh, reliable, and uh, resilient operation of future mixed ACDC power systems characterized by high penetration of uh, renewable energy sources. These uh, strategies will drastically reduce the system operational costs and enable massive utilization of renewables. Uh, today, uh, I will talk about uh, work packages one and work packages uh, work packages one and five about the development of benchmark models and development of uh, RTDS facilities. Let's move on uh, to the next topic. Uh, dynamic simulations are probably the best way for understanding the operation of complex technical equipment. State-of-the-art packages for dynamic simulation are used. Uh, PSCAT can be used for simulation of uh, conventional and uh, non-conventional electrical equipment, as well as algorithms for relay protection and automation. Uh, all the above uh, can be done in the RTDS simulator, but the main feature of the RTDS simulator is the ability to use uh, it for testing electrical and control equipment. Converter interface generation dynamic simulations, I've started from the step-by-step -step development of photovoltaic system from scratch, uh, starting from design of solar module, finishing on inverter controls uh, development and connection of PV system uh, to the external power system. As a result, uh, a draft version of the tutorial was prepared and probated on the laboratory classes in Skolte. Uh, the tutorial I mentioned uh, consisted of four main steps. The first step was devoted to the selection of parameter solar power plant. Uh, also, the dependencies of the characteristics of a solar uh, power uh, system uh, on insulation and temperature have been investigated. Uh, the next step is uh, boost DC-DC converter that matches the output voltage of a uh, solar power plant uh, to the required range of voltage. Uh, the transistor of DC-DC boost converter is controlled by PWM uh, to form the output voltage range, P PI regulator is used. Uh, in the third, third step, uh, the filter was calculated. Uh, the filter suppresses higher harmonics and performs the function of decoupling of uh, external power system and the inverter system. Uh, the, and the last step is the inverter control design. A uh, developed uh, PV model was integrated into a representative simple power grid uh, represented by a single line circuit. Next to the PV, the network included a synchronous generator and a load. Results uh, of dynamic simulations are presented at the right. Here, the load, uh, P load, and the PV panel insulation uh, are dynamically changed. During the test, the insulation was slowly increased. Uh, PV system was set to inject maximum power to the grid. Load changes uh, were predominantly followed by changes uh, of the grid output power, as it can be seen on this figure. 
uh, gained knowledge about the principles of converter interface uh, system operation was applied for the mega grant research. Uh, I mean, MPAC project. The list of the developed benchmark models is presented. The impact of uh, converter interface generation uh, on the fault current level was investigated. Uh, a three phase fault uh, at bus two was simulated. Uh, based on the current graphs obtained, it can be concluded that the grid current is much higher than the wind for farm current. Furthermore, uh, it can be concluded that the wind farm current is much more distorted. Uh, this can negatively impact digital productive relays, for example. Developed uh, individual components was uh, uh, Developed individual components were integrated into a single model presented on this slide. Let's uh, consider a temporary fault occurring on the um, connecting point of coupling, bus and bus six. Here is a fault. The intention uh, is to investigate the impact of renewable energy to the fault recovery after the fault. In the first case, uh, following the fault, the type four wind farm and the faulty line are disconnected from the grid. I mean, this farm, wind farm and this transmission line. Uh, the fault is eliminated uh, and the line after closure successfully reconnects the fault line, uh, but uh, type four wind farm is still disconnected. It can be seen that the, with the loss of generation, even after reclosing the line, uh, the bus voltage is not fully recovered. And in the second stage, uh, the type four generator was considered as not disconnected from the grid. So uh, we can observe that uh, a full voltage, uh, we can observe a full voltage recovery uh, on this experiment. Uh, the models developed in PSCAD were converted to run on a real-time simulator. As an example, a microgrid system is presented. Uh, this microgrid system consists of two solar systems, energy storage device, and diesel generator. The purpose of developing this model is to study two modes of operation. Uh, it's like a parallel mode with an external network and island mode. When disconnected from the network, uh, the reference voltage in the system is created by diesel generator. Also, the diesel generator instantly responds to uh, changes in the amount of uh, output and power consumed. The next point of this presentation is uh, power hardware uh, in the loop test. A method uh, of power hardware in the loop uh, is the method to reduce development uh, time and cost of uh, integrate, uh, in integrating of uh, distributed generation. Uh, this method allows not only to carefully simulate the behavior of microgrid system virtually, but also connect real physical equipment to the model. Uh, due to integration of uh, converter interface generation, a new category of consumers uh, has appeared. Yeah. I mean, prosumers. Uh, the figure illustrates the challenge of large scale renewable energy integration in low voltage grids. So the red category represents low voltage networks and the blue category represents medium and high voltage networks. In the base case, the direction of power flow goes from the highest voltage to the lowest. And with prosumers, a power surplus may occur in the system uh, and all the needs of consumers are covered and excess power will be supplied to medium voltage through a transformer substation. And this can critically affect the reliability and stability of power system. Uh, this is uh, 
where the development of uh, recommendation on the technological connection of prosumers will be required, uh, which uh, is non trivial task itself. Uh, one of the effective ways to work out all the scenarios of functioning uh, of the converter interface generation facilities and assess their impact on other elements of uh, electric power system is to conduct power hardware in the loop tests. Uh, reliability issues for microgrids require careful consideration of normal and uh, emergency operating conditions. The main feature uh, of the power hardware in the loop tests uh, is four quadrant amplifier. Uh, four quadrant amplifier can operate in all four power quadrants. Uh, I mean, both give out and absorb power. The diagram on the slide shows the possibility of connecting the, uh, the amplifier to a real time simulator running the model. And through the amplifier, uh, we can connect uh, electrical equipment to the virtual model. Uh, so we can conduct some cyber physical tests using four quadrant amplifier. Uh, four quadrant amplifier has recently been commissioned uh, to test standard uh, 0 0.4 volts equipment in our laboratory uh, because the simulator itself can output uh, up to 10 volts the amplifier is very useful for uh, experimenting with microgrid equipment photographs uh, um, of a cyber physical experiment uh, with the creation of that digital twin uh, of a single phase uh, load is presented uh, the amplifier in this experiment acts like a voltage source. Here we have a virtual model of a controlled resistor and a physical load in the form of a fixed resistor and rheostat. Uh, the resistance of the virtual parts changes in accordance with the position of the slider uh, of the physical rheostat. Uh, in the virtual model, the amplifier output voltage is regulated and the physical measurements of voltage and current uh, come back to the model. Uh, then the resistance is calculated according to uh, Ohm's law. The results um, of the experiment uh, in regulating of the voltage uh, of the amplifier are presented. If you pay attention to the graphs, uh, here you can see the process of uh, regulating the output voltage of the amplifier. The next test uh, I want to present to you is the connection of three-phase load. As a virtual part, uh, we have an adjustable voltage source, but with the physical part, everything is much more interesting than on the previous slide. Uh, in this presentation, I'm also happy to demonstrate some of the facilities of our laboratory. Uh, so uh, as physical equipment, my colleague and I uh, connected part of the smart gate laboratory, namely, uh, namely two linear loads. <laughs> Can you please mute yourself? Uh, may you, can you please ask uh, the person in question to mute himself uh, or herself? Please wait for a moment. Okay, thank you very much. Please mute yourself. Uh, yes, yeah. Okay, Stepan, you can move forward. Um, thank you. Uh, on this slide, uh, a diagram of electrical and information channels is presented. What is interesting here is that measurements of voltages, currents, and uh, frequencies can be sent from the virtual model to RTDS in the form of vectors, according to the protocol C, uh, PMU protocol. Uh, and then uh, on the working computer in the SCADA system, 
we can draw all the received measurements, also observed changes in the network operation mode. I intentionally left uh, uh, the parts of electrical circuit highlighted in gray to show the possibility of testing this equipment using a power amplifier. Here I have duplicated all the images uh, from the previous slide. Uh, amplifier measurements for all three phases are presented. Here you need to pay attention to voltage, current, and frequency that are highlighted in red. It can be seen that the measurements received by the server via uh, IEEE protocol correspond to the physical values. Uh, this fact verifies the correctness of the model. And thus, uh, we can say that uh, I and uh, my colleagues have prepared a reliable testbed for cyber physical tests. For the purpose of practical understanding of renewables, I was engaged uh, as a team leader in the industrial project with Rossetti. Uh, Rossetti is the largest grid company in Russia. Uh, Krasnodar territory was chosen as the region under consideration as the most favorable for the construction of solar power plants according to the irradiation map. Uh, information about connected consumers uh, in one of the villages of the Krasnodar territory is presented. The graph uh, shows the capacity uh, 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 of growing uh, uh, the capacity of consumers growing from year to year. Uh, therefore, there is a generation power uh, shortage issue can occur. Uh, we're simulating the case when the needs of new consumers are covered by solar generation. I want to make a reservation that uh, we did, uh, didn't did use uh, some diesel uh, engines, diesel generators, batteries, and uh, other energy sources because our project was sp uh, specialized, uh, uh, sp uh, specifically agreed with uh, Rossetti and is associated uh, only with uh, solar energy. We are also lucky that we have people from the Krasnodar Theater in our team. Uh, therefore, we found uh, a real quite successful project that has already put into operation. You can see the photo of the object on the slide. Based uh, on the technical features of the uh, specified facility, we plan to scale the solution, taking into account the identified technical and regulatory problems. We are looking for the optimal share of solar generation in 0 0.5 uh, kilowatt network for uh, simulating various cases. Uh, we rely on the grid voltage loss formula to determine the acceptable share of solar generation in the grid. The criterion is the voltage remains in the range of 5% of the nominal value. Uh, in this picture, this range is marked as green. The case of installing 10 kilowatt of uh, power was submitted for consideration and uh, an, ex an acceptable voltage increase is observed. We are looking for the optimal share uh, of solar generation in 0 0.4 kilovolt network by simulating various cases once again. So let me summarize all my activities. All activities and projects uh, I talked today were aimed at both theoretical and practical understanding of the impacts of, of converter interface, in interface generation facilities on the electric power system operation. Uh, I have developed some PSCAD models, converted mentioned models for real-time simulation launching, and uh, made sure that all models showed uh, theoretically expected behavior when certain operating conditions changed. And uh, also I took part in real industrial project with largest uh, Russian grid company, Rosetti. 
uh, I need to point out that uh, uh, that was my uh, work during the first year of PhD study. Uh, in the second year of PhD, uh, I'm planning to uh, apply some mathematical and machine learning algorithms for uh, for some uh, observed uh, and uh, synthesized uh, data sets from uh, models and uh, put more focus on some machine learning methods. Thank you very much for your attention. That's it for today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stepan. Thanks for your informative presentation. Considering that you are year one PhD degree student, that you are practically now moving to year two, in which uh, you will be more involved in scientific uh, questions, because in year one, you have been also attending lectures and accomplished several uh, modules, several subjects. Uh, uh, this uh, looks to be very promising. And uh, I would like to point out that the presentation addressed uh, those issues related to mathematical modeling of different system components, their integration into uh, RSCAD software package, uh, it's a software package for electromagnetic transient processes assessment uh, and uh, analysis of some of uh, phenomena related to photovoltaics or integration of type 3 or type, or type 4, wind farms uh, assessment of faults, for example, and uh, design of uh, laboratory capable of uh, running hardware in the loop testing or power hardware in the loop testing. Before we move to ask questions, uh, Stepan, would you be so kind as to go to, I forgot the slide number, but this was a slide about uh, uh, flexible uh, platform for data acquisition and presentation of uh, results uh, in uh, the screen, that what you, yes, exactly. Can you go to the slide before? The slide before, please. Yes, so this is that what I wanted to be a little bit more focused on. Um, so just to help very quickly and briefly to say, it's about a real-time digital simulator, which is the core in which uh, we run dynamic simulations uh, of the network. Furthermore, we have a, a four quadrant amplifier, which is connected to another piece of hardware. This is our uh, smart grid part of physical laboratory, and in which we make changes on load. And we wanted to demonstrate that these changes are also uh, seen both in the amplifier, but also in a specially designed data, data acquisition system. That is our platform, which is a kind of uh, data, uh, open phaser data concentrator, so that we can have visualization of that, what is happening both in RTDS and in the hardware which we are testing. So can you, uh, Stepan, say a few more words about uh, this part of the work because it is a practically giving a, a bigger picture of laboratory facilities which we have at the moment in our laboratory. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, so to be more precise, uh, on this slide, we see the scheme of uh, smart grid laboratory. Uh, there are presented some physical models of uh, electrical equipment. We see some linear loads, non-linear loads, generator, compensator, wind turbine, uh, diesel generator, PV system, energy storage. It's the so physical. Is, yeah, that's important, physical model. So can you go to slide before just to show that how it looks like? Uh-huh, yes. Exactly, explain this, yes, exactly. Yes, I, I mean, uh, we have uh, some physical models of real power equipment. Uh, 
wind turbine, uh, diesel generator, synchronous machine, and others. So uh, speaking more about this scheme, uh, using our uh, four quadrant PAV 5000 amplifier, we can uh, connect all this laboratory, all this laboratory uh, to our virtual model in RTDS and run it all on, on the real time. It, it so, means- To integrate uh, them together. Yes, uh, exactly. And uh, running the simulation like that, in, in that way, I mean, uh, virtual model and physical equipment. We can conduct some cyber physical tests. Uh, and these cyber physical tests uh, can show uh, the, um, some impact of uh, uh, converter interface generation, for example, to the uh, real network. And uh, we can uh, simulate the real operating conditions of real physical power equipment. And speaking more uh, about uh, this scheme, uh, also, we can observe uh, simulated uh, operating parameters like voltages, currents, and uh, frequencies on the SCADA system. Uh, uh, this SCADA system is uh, run on uh, virtual uh, PC, no, not on virtual PC, on uh, automated uh, working place or personal computer of uh, uh, some uh, of our colleagues and uh, running some SCADA system, uh, we can observe uh, all the measurements uh, that we have in our cyber physical simulation. Yes, no, so we have, we are visualizing that what we see both in RTDS and on the physical components which we have in our lab, Plus, we are storing data. In the next stage, we are planning to process data, as Stefan mentioned. We will consider now that we have a data science problem so that uh, machine learning or uh, artificial intelligence-based approaches could be used, for example, for situational awareness aspects uh, what is, uh, and decision-supporting aspects, plus uh, eventually for aspects uh, which have to do with control, even using a digital twin um, concept and something like that. So thank you very much. I wanted just to point out some aspects of your work and now would like to give word to the audience and I'm kindly inviting uh, Dr. Kersti from Warwick uh, to ask uh, his question. Please, uh, Mostar. Hi, yeah. Good morning, everyone from my side. Uh, thank you very much, Vladimir. Also, thank you, Stefan. Very informative presentation, and congratulations for like your first year PhD and doing very well on hardware in the loop. Thank and uh, also, congratulations, Vladimir, for having such an excellent uh, hardware facilities. I really enjoyed it. Um, you selected a very good uh, slide <laughs> that I have the, the both <laughs> slides. I'm going to have some questions about the diesel generator or generator hardware you just now uh, you showed us um is it a, a four quadrant bidirectional power electronic emulator or uh, i believe it's not the real generator some sort of emulator you are using could you explain further elaborate is it bidirectional is it uh, load following uh, or is it uh, a sort of grid emulator that can uh, provide reference signals to the bus bar. No, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Keshe, for your question. Uh, I need to mention that uh, we have two types of uh, diesel generator. One of, uh, one of them is like grid simulator. Uh, I mean, grid forming. Uh, and second diesel generator we have in special machine room. Uh, it's the like a real, uh, real generator. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So the uh, the real generator. Okay, that's fine. The one that you just now said is grid forming uh, simulator. Uh, I was looking for such hardware to purchase as well. So which company you are using? Hmm. 
<laughs> that's very interesting question but i don't uh, uh, have some information about uh, the uh, it's actually motor generator set where the generator is double fed induction generator i also don't know the manufacturer but we can look at, at it and uh -huh. it yes yes it's motor yeah. generator set uh, okay, I was talking about the the power electronic one. Uh, yeah, I have uh, purchased the motor generator exactly. It arrived two weeks ago, two three weeks ago. We are going oh, to connect nice. it as well. Mm. But uh, very nice. And also about the SCADA system you have, is it a software package you developed yourself or you purchase it at a third party to show everything together? Because I believe that some of the power electronics, well, RTDS has its own RSCAD system. Mm. And then some of the emulators have their own software as well. You can receive data and you can work with it. In terms of OpalRTI, I saw you have OpalRTI as well. You can also control all the elements in OpalRTI. I don't know about RS, RTDS exactly. So uh, could you elaborate on this SCADA system as well? Mm -hmm. uh, about this SCADA system, I can say that it was developed by my colleagues, uh, but uh, I think not, not from scratch, but for our purposes that we are working on in, in our mm -hmm. laboratory. Uh, uh, Javi, yeah. Yes, 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 please. Uh, so, you know, we have a, a third party designed uh, micro SCADA system, uh, partially tailored to our needs uh, by our engineers. However, we have a very independent platform which is based on Opal open phaser data concentrator where we are designing our own platform for uh, we call it flexible data acquisition platform for our purposes so that we have a full freedom to design our applications for monitoring control and protection perspective that's very interesting this is really good um... The more we dig into this uh, uh, laboratory you have, the more interesting it becomes. Uh, also, sorry, I keep asking the questions. I will uh, later give the time to audience as well. Uh, one follow-up question is that uh, uh, because RTDS, uh, as my old knowledge I have, is you use RSCAD to model uh, the power system, but you mentioned about PSCAD. Does it have the functionality of integrating PSCAD and power factory models into RTDS, or you have to build everything in scratch uh, using RSCAD the software? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for this question. Uh, I know that in RSCAD software, we have special transition tool uh, like uh, PSCAD to RSCAD, but uh, uh, I believe that our Canadian partners uh, are developing their tool, uh, are modernizing their tool to work uh, normally because uh, I was using uh, this tool for uh, real conversion of my PSCAD models to RSCAD and uh, uh, I don't have succeeded in this. Okay. Uh, about the Power Factory, I think one of your slides also mentioned Power Factory and PSSE. Is it uh, possible to integrate them directly into RSCAD or you have to build the model again yourself? Mm -hmm. uh, I know that uh, we can integrate PSCC models or Power Factory models to PSCAD. Uh, but about RTDS, uh, I haven't. Uh, uh, haven't uh, heard about uh, this experience. Uh, okay, that was interesting you said. So it's possible to integrate uh, um, Power Factory model into PSCAD. Yes, that's true. Uh, PSCAD has such a new uh, feature. And after integrating into PSCAD, does R RSCAD allow import from PSCAD? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, does RSCAD allow such, a, does it have such functionality? uh maybe it's uh, have some functionality but i haven't used uh, it Stephen, if I, if for I this moment help, if i if i can help uh, this uh -huh. is something what uh, i expect uh, that it will be developed by uh, rtds uh, company and this is something what we are expecting uh, because psc 
we have PSCAD. If I have a PSCAD and I'm in aeroplane, I can run yes. PSCAD software, mm -hmm. but I cannot run RSK software if I'm not connected to RTBS and if RTBS is not working. That's true, yes, that's yes. One of, one of the things, so there is not yet, but we are desperately waiting for this compatibility between PSCAD and RSCAD. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's very interesting and uh, very important. I will mention why uh, in the next uh, presentation, I mean, next week, <laughs> a, lot, yes, a little yes, bit yes, about it. Forward. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, fantastic, yeah. Good, good announcement that the next week you're going to have uh, Dr. Kersti, uh, who also used to work at Shandong University, who is originally coming from Iran. Um, Thank oh, you. Is it Shiraz or? Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. Shiraz, Beautiful city, Shiraz. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, no, yeah yes. thank you very much. Uh, so I will give the stage to other audience for now. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mustafa, for your uh, discussions and questions. Um, may I ask the audience to ask a question or to ask even, is there anybody from uh, the audience, uh, any of students who is working in existing smart green laboratory with Professor uh, Ding or Professor Horan Zhao, Zhao Horan. Is there anybody who is working in uh, laboratories? Uh, I think uh, uh, the students from Professor Zhao are working at uh, the Berkeley's, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think they are here now. Okay, good. Because I know mm. that uh, you have a relatively yeah, new. Mm. Yeah, they are building a very complex uh, uh, platform that can run something in real time. And they are also building a digital twin as well. Digital twin, yes. yes, that's yes. Yeah, and uh, I heard that uh, Professor Zhao has also got a project probably just on, on this uh, area. Very good. I'm asking this question because I see so many opportunities for collaborative work on uh, hardening in the loop testing and design of uh, new applications, but also jointly with Warwick, jointly with the Technical Univers University of Delft. Uh, so, so many opportunities for all of us uh, uh, to move forward together. Even I was thinking about uh, writing a good review paper in which all of us could be involved. Yeah, yeah, that would be very interesting. I do not, I do not mean all participants. What means that we would have thirty-nine co-authors, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. of course, all universities. Yeah. Uh, where you maybe you have a comment? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor. I, I'm just uh, saying that. Uh, because our laboratory for uh, uh, hardware in the loop test is still under construction. And uh, we hired, actually we hired two uh, engineers uh, for, uh, for this work. So most of our students are not too familiar with the, so familiar with the hardware in the loop test, but uh, we will do that uh, in the future, in the near future. We will learn how to do this. And uh, this is a very, uh, a very good opportunity for us to to uh, have some information about that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for this. And and may I also uh, kindly ask uh, that uh, uh, Stefan mentioned uh, he has got a tutorial for this uh, uh, hardware in the loop uh, uh, presentation, something like this. Can I kindly ask for this uh, tutorial? Mm. Uh, yeah. I believe yeah. uh, that you mean my tutorial about PV simulation PSCAD. Yes, uh, yes. For now, I, I have it in Russian, but I'm still developing English version of this tutorial. And uh, uh -huh. maybe with collaboration, uh, collaborating with my professors, we can some. Uh, of course. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. yes. We are, we are yeah. happy. I know that uh, every opportunity which we have from our side to give you some of our models. I know that in exchange, there will be echo that we will receive your at least comments or some new challenges, which will then help us to be become better. And so when we start this rotation, 
we will just uh, be in a position to learn from each other. Yes, definitely uh, this uh, tutorial will be also available for those who are interested, who are part of our uh, kind of uh, consortium in which we are working together, including Warwick, uh, Indian Institute of Technologies, uh, Belgrade, uh, um, by the way, uh, or Del Delft, by the way, at the IIT, Indian Institute of Technology in Kanpur, they have also real-time laboratory based on both RTDS and Opal RT. So that uh, in Shandong, it is Opal RT, I think, dominated lab. We have also RTDS, but uh, the one which yes, we are yes. talking about uh, with uh, Horan uh, Zhao, Professor Zhao Horan, is Opal RT based. Right? I'm not mistaken. Good. So from re the report translation to English would be very welcome also for me as well. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, actually, I have got a little question. Uh, that is uh, uh, for the renewable energy like uh, PV and uh, have you considered wind farm as well? So what kind of con uh, control scheme have you used? Is it just the MPVT or any kind of uh, control scheme, like uh, inertial control, something like that? Mm -hmm. uh, I used uh, MPVT controllers. MPVT control, okay. So, okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Good. Do we have further questions? Mm. Uh, I see, I see, for example, I, I'm looking at Chinese names, and one is this like a T. Uh, it is like Lei, or is it Lei? No, Ding, Ding, or Ding or Lei. Like like Professor Lei, these uh, two persons have this T. I'm just looking at characters. Of course, I cannot read them. They are very similar to me. Some of them. There is two persons with this T. Never mind. Oh, is it uh, you? Or, that is uh, uh, or something similar to the name of uh, Ding Lei. Okay, I know. Uh, I, is this this one? Uh, I I will type it down. Like uh... <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Good. Uh, so very nice. So uh, it, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Aha. Oh, you sent me the exactly, exactly. Ah. This uh, this name. Uh, uh, so, he's my MS student, Yu Yue. Ah, this is, uh -huh, this is not, uh, what, what, so this character, okay, the first yeah. character, you can see in your chat, the first character, what, what does it mean? Yu uh, Yue, uh, ah. that is actually um, uh, something like uh, at. Uh, okay, good, good, good. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm not like Mustafa. Mustafa speaks Chinese, excellent. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Can you say something in Chinese, Mustafa? Um, in Gai <laughs> 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 uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, I just said uh, what to say, but uh, mm. yeah, yeah, so she want Gaja to uh, do a win event, which is a Jihui, uh, uh, <laughs> 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 对，大家那个踊跃提问一下，特别就是咱们做这个硬件在黄的这个经验比较少啊。Don't forget Chinese. So how about Mustafa's Chinese? Is it still okay or Chinese? Yeah, very good. Is, yeah, very good. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, I can totally Excellent. understand. <laughs> Excellent. Great. Thank you. Very nice. I, I like also these uh, spontaneous conversations. So it looks that we can slowly conclude our session traditionally by making a joint photograph. Uh, and where you, it's now you who should now okay. do your part, though, please. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, if uh, there's no more questions, we can take a joint photograph uh, now. Uh, now I'm asking all the audience, if you have a, a camera, please turn it on and we will take the joint photograph. Uh,
。好，谢谢。Very nice. Okay. Oh, so nice to see all of you. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Uh, I'm now taking a photo. Uh, three, two, one. Okay. I've taken the photo. Thank you very much. Okay, all right. You. Thank you very much to all attendees. In the first line, thank you very much for Stefan Vasile, who gave us uh, a very nice, interesting, and informative presentation on hardware in the loop testing facilities on modeling. Thank you very much for those who asked quite interesting questions. And announcement for the next uh, week, we will have Dr. Mustafa Keshti, who will tell us something, what we're going to enjoy in seven days. Thank you. I'm very uh, looking forward to that. Yes. Yeah, thank well, you very much. I don't yes. know how to say thank you in Russian, but uh, yeah, maybe Spasiba. 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 yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much, everyone. Also, thank thank you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.